Welcome to the Deadly Addiction channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Another DC movie, the last of its run, I guess the Snyder Universe or the previous incarnation. I was surprised to learn that there were 15 movies <laughs> in the DCEU. And off the top of my head, I was up to 11. I was like, well, yeah, there is that many. So Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is a well-directed movie, but there are pieces that are clunky, and I'm going to say editing is a little bad. A fun movie. And for me, that's kind of what matters, but this is not a good movie. You know, I'm doing the air quotes. In the general sense but i give a lot of passes if it's my bias my love of comic books um how i say most marvel movies have been consistently good so the ones that are a little subpar or you know don't carry the villain well but amazing performances special effects action so it serves its comic book counterpart well if you're talking about a visual medium you're getting into it, uh, underwater, new visuals, special effects were, in some parts, great. Uh, some of the direction. So, I'm looking at Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom as a fun ride. I kind of enjoyed the buddy cop moments. But, you you got to be careful with tone. And if you got a serious tone, and you're lighting it with some comedy i think marvel does this so well but obviously if you're gonna go with an ant-man movie it's gonna be a lot of comedy but they don't uh, hit the tone too dark and if they do they let it breathe a little while this feels like it's rushed and we've got some deep things to consider you know they did this with thor a little bit too much and the comedy thing and the tone is it you know, am I supposed to feel sad here? And I'm rushing into an action scene with his jokes. And I guess that's the floor of this movie. Uh, again, I can't say much about the direction. The cinematography it just looks amazing in some parts. It was great seeing, like, Dolph Lundgren back. And thinking about the mirror sort of controversy and looking online, you know, when I did my little wiki thing, I don't know... I was talking to my friend, and without giving too much away, it almost felt like our feelings were that they kind of edited the movie and went more buddy cop because they were cutting Mira out. Now, when I did a quick check on Wiki, to just glancing through things, it seems that wasn't the case, but that could be, you know, covering their asses and stuff. I really don't have a, a total issue with Amber Heard or that whole situation. Although, if you ask me off the top of my head, I think Johnny Depp won the public opinion and the lawsuit type. If that means anything, though I think she's a bad person, or I, I don't know. I've heard some things. I didn't watch the trials. And I think that's a big part of this movie because... You get to the plot, and they should have just cut so much out of this movie and streamlined it for some comedy, but with a good tone of seriousness when they needed it. Because Jason Momoa is a charismatic actor. You're going to like him in a lot of things. And although what rumors of him going to be cast as Lobo, which he probably would have been better at, I was fine, and he, I grew to like him a lot. I love the uniform, the way it looks, the comic bookness of it. They even used a blue stealth uniform, which was a throwback to like a certain couple of issues of Aquaman, I think, where it was a run. He needed like a stealth suit. I like some of the cast. I like uh, Orm, his brother, the way they, um, you know, had chemistry, but you do it too much. It gets a little too heavy and it breaks everything when there's, I'm trying to deal with the fact that he's a father now. And it feels awkward. 
he's got a baby, and the mirror thing, you're like, what's going on? Did she, did she die? You know, it, it feels, I don't know, it's thin and not very well worked on, or was it cut and edited more? I don't know. I, I'm not going to do hours of deep dives on interviews and conversations, but this is the movie that's in the theaters. This is the movie you go and see. Is it worth the popcorn admission for fun times? I'm going to say probably yes, but that's just the comic book geek in me. If you're going for a critical examination of the movie, uh, I don't think it holds up. Again, the plot. So we've got Aquaman sometime later, uh, three or four years. He's got a baby, and he's got. I like seeing the fall, little lighthouse type aspect of his world building, if you want to call it anything. And it, it didn't fit that he was still the king of Atlantis and what's going on there. It didn't blend well. And with this plot, you're bringing back uh, Black Manta. And there's this underlying evil threat. And I thought it was wasted and diluted the film. Because Black Manta's supposed revenge is a real heavy tone and a legitimate gripe, if you want to say, in the DCEU, where in the first movie, Jason Momoa doesn't save the father. And he drowns or dies, and he takes vengeance. And no matter how absurd this fucking energy blast he does, or the technology he has affects Aquaman, or anything it fucking hits, basically, he gets his hands on a trident, which is tied to a deep, ancient, mystical power, evil power. And I thought that's all you should have done, is hint at that. Now, I know there might have been COVID and DCEU was in shambles. Is James Wan directing? Is he coming back? Who's signing? Is Jason Moore producing? Is he writing the fucking script? He's giving ideas. And I think it came out that they were going to do a trench movie and James Wan was really interested in the underwater and making it more horror. Regardless of all that, there are elements in here that just, there's just too much without a solid through line is a reason why I love Lethal Weapon so much or 48 Hours and Buddy Cop movies. This movie had those elements. They have great chemistry. I was actually surprised. Uh, what is it? What's his name? Uh, Patrick Wilson? Just fun. I was enjoying it here and there, but of course, they go a little too much. And the comedies... With the villain theme, it's just not working. There's politics stuff in Atlantis. And you have enough of that. You have enough of the creatures and the wonder of being underwater in this fantasy world, basically, in the comic book land. You know, done more elegant and, you know, enriching than, let's say, the Submariner and Black Panther. But, you know... I don't know about budgets and stuff. So, you've got Aquaman, he's the king, he's a father, this Mary shows up here and there, and it's obviously Black Manta's quest for revenge, and Jason Momoa's got to free his brother from prison to help him solve this plot mystery, you know. They make... The plots involve him, and he's got to be used. And I thought they did it well. I was actually enjoying it. Again, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, who can't, you know, barely speak in English and get different accents. He's such a charming actor, and he has such a great career. You can see that with Jason Momoa. And I noticed Patrick Wilson from a lot of these horror movies, and I think even James Wan's using him a lot. I like him in a lot of this stuff, and they work well together. So either, even if they're cutting Amber Heard out or they're cutting her parts down and making it more of a buddy cop, whatever the case may be, you're involving Black Manta and that should have been it. And maybe like a hint or a, a cut scene at the end where you find out the Triton is connected to this ancient thing and you hint at a, a continuation or a further expanding of this fantasy world. 
two separate movies, like whatever their plans were. And when it's injected in here, it just feels like it dilutes the purpose of the movie and even the climax. It just, I don't know. And they got like a lot of little things going on in here with, you know, um, climate change. And I get it, you know, and it's, it's just this cliche in the comics or a trope. But it's, you know, true in a way where Aquaman or Submariner basically says, you know, my kingdom is 70% of the planet, basically. It's mostly water, whatever. And, you know, if you're going to take any of these things and, you know, just get immersed in the world, you gotta, you got to understand that, and I get it. Show a lot of the beauty and the wonder, the scariness. And how do you blend that? You look at some of the Avenger movie, even like Winter Soldier, to praise it gets for being like an espionage thing. You can go through that movie and find the tones of humor in there. And But, again, it's a combination of editing and stuff where things breathe. And I want to really feel um, Manta's anguish and rage and like what he's doing and why he's going through with this. And I was actually kind of happy with his ending a uh, spoiler, um, because of the big bad ancient thing is getting awoken because they have to take uh, Aquaman's son. He The son was kidnapped. By the way, I think in the comic books, Buck Manta kills the kid. And I was wondering if that's where they were going to go, but I don't think you're going to do that unless you have like, a commitment for a trilogy. But what a growth and roller coaster ride that would have been for Aquaman and Mira. Anyway... Black Manta's ultimate demise in this movie is his own, where this time uh, Aquaman's reaching out a hand to save him from falling into some like fissure in the ground and underwater, whatever. And he says no, and he just dies. <clears throat> well, you know, he falls into the abyss, and who knows if he's really dead? Yeah, they don't show like lava like melting his body. Oh, well, maybe I missed it. In any case, I like that he didn't like take his hand and try to become an anti-hero or no, he's like you didn't save my father, you could have saved us both, you know, and fuck you and all that stuff. So again, uh pivotal points in the movie that don't breathe right, that don't feel edited properly, action that is sometimes amazing in what they can do in this day and age. I'm so happy with them talking underwater that it doesn't even make sense. But, like, who the fuck gives a fuck? Like, I, watch, I read the comics. And look, Aquaman's not the biggest character, but I had interest in him as a kid. I didn't maybe read every arc that came out, but there's interest there. And, um, again, the chemistry is good. Cinematography. I can't say nothing bad about the music. It's just when you're getting carried along on these movies, I feel like at certain parts of this movie, I'm not really almost paying attention or remembering why we're here. And that, that could be a problem. Like the, uh, what was it, the last Ant-Man movie made me feel that way a little bit. Again, Wonder Woman, 1984, I think that might be even a bad fucking movie. But I'm not going to say I didn't have fun watching it. Again, this could be experience. You're watching it with a friend. Or you're in a movie theater. You're having a great experience. These things affect that. And I'm not here to do a critical score type thing. I don't think I've ever done that except in general purpose. Maybe I've mentioned it once in a while. Like I would give this a five or whatever the fucking norm is. But, you know, we've got attacks. We've got greenhouse. we got, um... Like chemicals, or I forgot what they called this stuff. Um, oracalcum. Or oracalum. I mean, yeah, it might be a real ancient metal in ancient writings, but this is what we're going on. And again, you got plot and a subplot, and you're watching the growth to the, the chemistry between them. This is funny, this is real funny, this is too funny, and we're getting out of hand, and I'm supposed to take it serious here. I don't know, and this place is like, um, an ancient, uh, 
was a brother of the king, Atlan. And Orm has a good moment in the movie. Like, maybe Orm's character is like the best character of growth in the movies when I'm not I'm thinking about it. And he has a good moment where he touches the trident. I'm forgetting if he touches it by accident in the fight first. And he gets a a glimpse. And then I think Manta throws the trident the black trident at somebody and Orm catches it. Yet I think that's at the end where he tries to break the hold. And he's like, he's a good actor. It plays well. I understand the uh, chain of events that led him to, you know, get, get, he's going to take the power and he's going to kill, you know, he's going to set free this fucking ancient guy who's getting up out of his chair from magical bindings. Uh, they needed certain blood. That's why they were going to use the baby. And Mira comes and saves it. And this whole ending is so anticlimactic. You have Black Manta. He's like, who should have been invested in and who should have been, you know, developed more. Even if it's conversations with people and looking at his father's picture. Um, maybe let the movie breathe in his anguish and, you know, his... He kidnaps a fucking kid, like a baby. And yeah, he's possessed by the trine. Okay, I'll give it that. But at the end, when he's free, and he, he's like, no, it, it, it felt like such a missed opportunity. Like, I, the guy was a good actor. Um, another problem with superhero movies in general. There are some great superhero movies, which I consider great. But the villains are so subpar, it, it you know... And it's a choice. Could it be? It's a definite choice. You know, we're not going to give this character so much, which is why I think I love Winter Soldier so much. Anyway, this ancient Cordax gets up out of his chair, breaks the bindings because, you know, twisty, twisty, gets out anyway. And, and in like fucking 18 seconds, it's wrapped up. Like, you didn't need that. The whole thing should have been cut out. There should have been Aquaman struggling to be a father and a king. You know, with Black Manta getting possessed by the trunk. You keep all that. You get your brother out of jail. You have moments with the baby and the mother, Mirren. You find that you care about your brother and he's not a twisted monster. And that they have good chemistry and the movie works well as a buddy cop movie. Give little hints of um, you know, environmental stuff, fucking new metals. But if you're going to use this ancient thing and by the second act, you're not bringing him into effect where he's like, you know, putting his finger on Black Manta's forehead and giving him power. It's like he's not an active thing and he's only being used through the, you know, the connection to the tr Black Trident. Just keep it that way. Make it mysterious. Don't see him that much. And just... Like, you know, I guess, you know, because reading this thing on Wiki, you know, before I do my thing, I leave the thing up, and I'm thinking now, what a mess it might have been just at DC in general. If this is the 15th movie, it's going to be the last one. There's some thing about they didn't have a red carpet, it was insulting, but, you know, Jason Momoa would have cast it. They try to make the best of it, have a fan thing. So you notice the last movie... And I wasn't a big fan of the Shazam movie. Or the second one. I love the first one. Um, had the same type of problems. Are they racing to catch up? Are they trying to make the comic book formula? Because it'll work. Because you're going to get me. And I've admitted that already. I bet you if I went to all my movies and had like a real credit here or I had to talk to somebody, a lot of, most of these movies would get pretty low scores. But I'm going to factor in the fun factor and how much I enjoy the movie. I don't know how many times I've said this, but I watched the Green Lantern movie insanely too many times. Because uh, if I have fun with it, it's not a good fucking movie. This could have been a really good movie. I'm going to say it's going to be fun for most people. The chemistry is great between them. 
the buddy action cop movie kind of works, but it kind of works. And when you have these things going on, layers and layers, he puts on the blue costume and for what? For how long? Uh, you know, was it just a promo thing? Is it an action figure? Again, what's going on at DC? Behind the scenes, the Flash movie. I thought it was so disappointing. I think I called it the Flash. So many elements of this universe were just squandered, in my opinion. And this new regime sounds terrible. That you're already saying you can't give no roles to the old characters. Oh, no, sorry. None of the other characters are coming back, but the actors could in different roles. So, for instance, I think one of the things was, if Jason Momoa comes back and he plays Lobo, he'll never be Aquaman again. Like, I understand that. But I'm not interested in a young Superman movie. When you've got Henry Cavill, Cavill, whatever, Gal Gadot, who... Ben Affleck. By the way, I don't know if this story is real, but Ben Affleck actually had a, like a bat cave in his basement. Like, I mean, he had the best scene in, in the fucking movies. Yeah, you could have adjusted him more to any type of Batman you wanted to, and they did, eventually, here and there. You don't let that go because of whatever... I don't know. I know it's a business. I know you want to make money. You want to recoup it, but... Sometimes that fan base is not going to be out there and it swells. They go buy their comic books if that's part of the thing. And they enjoy comic books that are kind of subpar but tell an interesting story. I don't think you can do that in movies. Not when people are paying, you know, money to go see it. Nowadays, it's either bootlegged or, you know, there's a concern with that. How are they recouping? They're going to make $150 million movies and keep investing in it. So... It's hard to trash on the DCEU as now this is the end. It did not like the Flash for the most part. It was so fucking annoying. This is ten times better in my opinion. Because I had fun with this movie through most of it. Could this lead to other things? Sure. You can tell James Wan had is talented and his creative efforts in this movie are apparent. I'm not going to question that but as a whole if it's COVID if it's you know your end is coming if it's budget and the pulling things public opinion and lawsuits with actors and on set whatever it is this kind of feels like I think I described this in my Morbius um, review it felt like someone had a bad had so much shit to edit and do they just did their best someone did it with love you can see the elements maybe some of the reshoots mattered and how they portray you know certain batman here and you know what was gonna be what's not the fact that in these years dc has made these movies and they scrapped the batgirl movie or is it batwoman whatever it was with michael keaton and it confused people in here because they had Michael Keaton in this as Batman, uh, the Aquaman movie. There's so many little things that are going on. Again, what a time in life having such great superhero movies. I remember when like X Men and Tobey Maguire, Spider Man came out. Just being oh, so fucking amazed as the ball was rolling with Blade. And again, I'm born in '71, so Christopher Reeve Superman. Uh, 89 Batman are like, you know, amazing experiences and just joy and fun. And, you know, you progress. I'm, I'm, I'll sit here and I don't know how many times I've watched Batman and Robin. <laughs> I mean, I want to have fun. I like Adam West Batman. You can get me on goofy, campy shit, but you can't twist all that kind of you know, tone in a movie that already has problems with plot and what you're putting in, what you're showing, and how you're developing it. And he's a father, what? Three, four years have passed. Oh, he's still the king. He's doing this and that to kidnap the baby. What mirrors here? There's the brother, get him out. That looks great. And then there's Manta, 
there's environmental stuff, there's politics, and then, you know what, some, I bet you there's movies that do way more than this, and they make it work, but maybe again, like, the time, COVID, it's all ending, you're not getting any more fucking reimbursed, you're not getting any reinvestment into this creative universe, how many problems are going on in the world, uh, you know, actors and fucking everything that can go wrong could probably go wrong and just fuck up certain movies. I say a lot, some not a lot, but I don't think people go out to make shitty movies. Do they go out to make a cash grab, make a quick buck? Sure. How people going on to the sets and knowing, you know, they're not giving it their role. Yeah, I'm sure that's, that happens out there. And these are big companies that we have confidence in. Jason Momoa, a charismatic, you know, leading actor in the sense, not like, I don't know, I haven't really had a big standout thing, like, if there's a debate in my head, like Sylvester Stallone or Arnold, you know, I can't debate, like, their movie success, but I would say, you know, Arnold's never had a Rocky, you know, Rambo, in that sense, so real in-depth acting and stuff. I, just, I know that's a quick thing off the top of my head, but I don't know where Jason Moe would fit in these things. He can just become Lobo, because that's probably what he fits better. So, I don't know. How people would view this as a, maybe a fun ride, an ending, a better ending than The Flash, for sure. Uh, if you're going to end, wrap up everything. Although I guess you could have used the Flash for so much more of bringing in the new things. Because that could happen here. There's no reason why you can't have Snyderverse on like Netflix. You do these movies, you expand these characters, all of them. Get Godot, Cavill, and you go along with your planned movies. And you have separate universes. This is such a big part of comic books to begin with. And is DC the most famous? Maybe not in a good way eventually, like over time. But Crisis on Infinite Earth, the multiverse, the stories that, you know, show you there are different superheroes and different variations of them throughout the multiverse. Maybe... Marvel's got a head start on them because they've done a multiverse of madness already. But the elements are there. DC's done it with the Flash, and you can tell with the Batman now. I mean, putting Batman in, and Keaton's there, and it screws up the ending with uh, George Clooney type thing. That, that could have been... That could still be fun. You can still have quality stuff. And I don't know if movies become a budget type thing over quality... Like, I was watching this thing, and I agreed with this premise, but I know it's stupid. So I'm going to say it right now, this is stupid. But if it was me, and I had control over, like, Marvel comic books, there would be a budget assigned. I don't care how much profit the company Marvel is making. There will always be a Fantastic Four book. There would always be a Quasar book. A Silver Surfer. Like, they would never be canceled. I don't care how bad the sales are. Whatever, there would be a commitment to the characters, expanding all this, bringing in to see if new arcs work or not. And I don't think you can do that in the movies. I don't think, I, even me saying that about comic books, these are hundred, two hundred billion dollar, whatever the fuck, hundred million dollar movies that you're making. And even if you're getting low budget, it's rare that you see. I mean, they're out there. There's some great movies, uh, low budget movies, forty million. I know that's a super low budget, but this had promised, the whole Snyderverse had promise here and there. But for the most part, it's bullshit. It's ruined by certain views that were theirs. If it was a Snyder ran thing, I think he kind of went overboard. And some of his shit is just god awful, and in my opinion. Again, for me, I'm mostly going fun factor. If I ever decide to do, like, <clears throat> ratings breakdown and in-depth, you know, step-by-step -step process of, you know, critiquing a movie, 
I just like to get on here and just smoke weed and fucking riff about my enjoyment of, you know, media and do a TV show, do some of the movies and I always try to go in with a good mind. I try to even preface some of my things about my attitude going in. I think I went in with this with a great attitude in a good place for the most part. Um, and I think it's fun. Um, me and my friend were, you know, laughing at some of the scenes and agree here and there about, you know, some of the tone. But it doesn't matter to him in, the, in this more than it does to me. Because I am sort of giving it a different lens. And I guess that's really uh, the issue with today. I don't know if we're going to blame COVID for how long. Or, you know, is the bubble bursting, comic book movies. I think that's all bullshit nonsense. Uh, there's no reason why you can't continue this, like I said, on a Netflix. Do it. Give the fans that love all this night of stuff. I'm not going to get mad. But I guarantee as I watch all that stuff and I rank on stuff, there'll be some great stuff in there. Even some of the movies that are like really bad. The Suicide Squad movie, that first one. And, you know, I want to love these movies. I'm a nerd geek for the most part. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. A fun ride, messy, clunky, thin, and in certain areas where you know you don't feel that impact that like you should. Uh, one of the great things I did with Loki, and they kind of thinned it out. Uh, you could have done with Black Manta. He had a real visceral experience there. Even going, you know, you go back to the movie. You know, I don't know if you blame it on. Jason Momoa or Aquaman being new or like, you know, Superman or a character like Batman in his youth or in his inexperience like fucks up something and someone dies. No, this was like Aquaman like watching the guy stuck, pinned down, the father, uh, Black Manta before his Black Manta is like, help me. And he just turns to him and says, fuck you. Like, go fuck yourself. Leaves and the father's like, go save yourself. And he becomes Black Manta. He fucking wants to kill Aquaman. I get it. You could have ran with that, made it deep. You had an obviously good fucking actor. Um, but if there's problems and there's a mirror Amber Heard bullshit, if that look, I'm happy that Orm and uh, Aquaman had their 48 hours buddy cop type adventure. Sorry if it impacted that aspect of it. Uh, I think Mira's powers and abilities are amazing like to see on, on screen. So I don't mind fucking, you know, if she was in it more. I'm not going to complain. The baby type thing. I mean, again, I'm already here. Who knows how long. And I just wonder about some of these uh, movies' futures. We know this is ending, but they're already talking about the James Gunn Superman. Like, and I don't really care. It could have been my attachment to these characters. And that's why I sort of bring up the Jason Momoa. He could be Lobo, would probably be a better fit. But who the fuck thought Hugh Jackman, someone who's like 6'2", 6'3", whatever his fucking height is. Clearly not, you know, short, stocky. And he, he became, he's still fucking playing the Wolverine and he's going to be in a Deadpool 3. Uh, you know, you grow to love uh, uh, someone's rendition of their, their portrayal of the character. And he gives it his own flair and he became this dude guy who I didn't really like in the beginning too much. But he grew, like, again, it's like Arnold, you know. You, you, know, you love him and he's got this way of portraying it. it's a rare thing Henry Cavill we know he was fucking Superman he was like amazing at it who cares if the movie sucked you know uh, so I would love to see it all carry on if it was up to me and I'm making billions and look okay I get it if you're losing money and whatever 
But I wouldn't look at it as a critical thing and I'm getting the land bad. Said, oh, we only made 80 million. On I, I get it if you're going under, you're losing money. And maybe this whole thing was started wrong, giving Snyder too much, you know, control. But it's there. I'm sure there's a big audience for it. You see it all over the place. I'm not the biggest fan. But in these last couple of movies, I'm going to say Aquaman and Lost Kingdom is better than The Flash by leaps and bounds, in my opinion. Could that have something to do with bias? Okay, maybe, you know, the Ezra Miller, whatever fucking private, personal bullshit, and that fucking disaster. Yeah, it's going to affect things, I'm sure, to a certain extent. But this is just a better, more fun ride for me. It holds up to me with, you know... Uh, you know, Shazam, I like Shazam. The first Wonder Woman is still probably my favorite. I gotta admit, as much as I hate Man of Steel, it's the first 40 minutes, that bullshit, Clark Kent, fucking nonsense. Even even when um, even when he's in the fucking working in the bar and the guy throws a drink on him and he's gotta control his anger and he lets, and then <laughs> Clark just takes, decides to take the guy's 18 wheeler and mangle it and like impale it on a fucking pole or something stupid like it's so fucking stupid you know my dad and the tornado but when he puts the fucking suit on it becomes a cartoon where fucking cities are getting destroyed i fucking love that right to the end when he breaks fucking zod's neck and i was like yeah fuck it i don't like any complaints with men don't kill whatever this is somebody's vision i'm gonna watch it it's not Christopher Reeve type thing, but I get it. He's stuck in a position. The guy can't move his eyeballs and his vision, but he's whole. I get it. And that scream at the end is probably the best fucking Superman scene where he can see the regret on his face. I'll give that credit. But I think if looking at this now, Aquaman The Lost Kingdom is the last movie in this Snyderverse, if you're going to call it that. The 15 movie, whatever. Although I still want to see the Batgirl. I'm going to say Wonder Woman is their best. The first Wonder Woman. I've watched that a million times. She is great as Wonder Woman. Her inexperience. Maybe that's the same thing to do with like Daisy Ridley or whatever. Why her lover in The Force Awakens. But God, I hate what they did with her. And I'm going to throw up just thinking about the Star Wars sequels. Uh, you know, so Wonder Woman is the icing on the cake here. The first Shazam movie. I really love I don't know about critical acclaim, <clears throat> but I think Wonder Woman stands up. The first movie, yeah, the Batman, the Justice League stuff was just fucking bad. I do like the, uh, you know, fucking Buffy director cut better than the Snyder cut. I thought adding some color and comedy and levity where it's needed worked. You know, the guy who did the fucking Avengers. So, I guess that's where I'll, I'll wrap this up. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is one of the more fun DC movies. I like what they did with the cop, buddy cop thing. It's just too diluted, too clunky. Um, again, there's some amazing director stuff, special effects. Look, sometimes just mind-boggling. I'll give it that. The chemistry is the best thing between them, or might be the most growth of a character, the way to do a villain, I guess, right? You can see him being a Magneto character. You can also see him turning and making another movie in the Snyderverse on Netflix where he is like a Magneto character. He will fucking kill and they've got to confront him. You can see that, now, again, but that's the that's the, the line you got to run with, making it too much comedy and, you know, too much fun with them. But, and like I said, it made me have fun. I like the general vibe it's not the best one but it's definitely not the worst so i recommend watching it if you're in, into it already you watch the first one you're into the comic books if it's your foray you know first one you're just jumping in i think people will be lost here like because the weight of black manta doesn't it's not strong enough or let breathe enough with you know is he possessed and what is his true motives? But again, I like what they did at the end with him. I think it was a great decision. And 
there we go. There's a ending to this chapter and the DCEU. Um, kind of sad to see it go because I don't think I'll get a better Superman or a Wonder Woman. Aquaman, maybe because he just might be a better Lobo. It just might fit. I mean, look at fucking Jason Momoa. You can definitely reuse these characters. You can have alternate universes, and maybe that's the future for whatever. But I'm not interested in this fucking Superman movie at all. I see some of the blurbs in here and there, and I get it. COVID, production, things are happening, and it's like 2025 release, so who the fuck knows how much changes will happen by then. You know, Disney might just buy them by all we know. You know, that almost happened in like 1984. DC put out a bunch of comic books and they fucking most of them flopped and they called Marvel. And I think Marvel was set to buy them, but they got brought to court for Monopoly or some crazy, um, you know, Monopoly clause. Like, if you're, whatever. In any case, they didn't buy DC, but who the fuck knows? Like, I would, that would be one of the most hilarious things ever. But it's not like I have a favorite. I mean,. It was a fucking image comic. I think it was called Union. I love that fucking comic book. I love the character. It was like only like eight issues. And they put him into the Death Note. And they merged the universes. I don't know if it was Vertigo. and Whatever. Anyway. I'm going off track here. Aquaman, The Lost Kingdom. The last of the Snyderverse. The ECEU. Last chapter. Fun movie. Good buddy cop chemistry. But not a great movie in that sense. Too clunky. Blah, blah, blah. Farewell. I hope to see these characters again. Like I said, Henry Cavill, even this first Shazam movie, there's great moments in here. I think people will enjoy this movie, though. It's a fun action movie. I'm going to watch fucking, um, was it Red Heat with fucking Jim Belushi and Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think that's the name of the movie. Anyway, hope everybody's doing well. My best to everybody. Take care.